Welcome back to Primitive Organic Garden. Today we're just gonna try to focus on the new things. I know y'all don't want to watch a 30 minute garden tour video, so I'm just gonna do a couple of clips and put them together. We're gonna look at all the things that are new since the last video. I think it's been at least three weeks since I did a video of the garden. So this little farm dog is new. She's learning to be a farm dog. I found a uh, toy, chew toy rat for her recently so she can learn to hunt rats. Uh, this little porch garden is new. Um, this is mainly just so I have something pretty to look at when I, you know, come in and out of the house. It's going to be mostly flowers. Um, I also put a few herbs in here. I think some basils and oregano and some lettuce just for, you know, days where it's absolutely pouring down rain and I don't feel like getting soaked if I just want to pick some herbs for dinner. Um, so yeah, uh, this is a fairly new little garden just within the last week or so. You can see a lot of stuff is just now starting to sprout. Um, mostly herbs and flowers. A few succulents. Alright, moving on. This was ochre last year. You can see the stump. Um, it's been leeks all winter and garlic and a few onions, and I just recently put some purple mustard in here. There's some volunteer cilantro. Uh, it's got a really, really nasty dollar weed infestation, as you can see, and that's not gonna get better until I really till it all up. So uh, I just stuck this tomato in here because I had actually given up on this tomato. I thought it was a goner. Um, so I stuck it in here to just kind of watch it die, and it actually seems like it's coming back now. So this is fairly, new in terms of the tomato. This tomato is also new. Um, same story as the one we just looked at. Different variety. First one was a yellow brandy wine. This is some random one that came out of a mixture of seeds, so I don't know what it is. Um, there were some potted plants here and dollar weed everywhere, and I thought this tomato was not going to make it. It didn't look good when it was in the tray, so I stuck it in here so I could just watch it die and it seems to be okay at the moment. This kale is not new, but the flowers on it are. Um, it's kind of a shame. This was a really nice kale, and it's only a couple months old, but we had a few days in winter that were exceptionally cold into the lower 20s, and then we had a couple days in February that were in the 80s, and it just got confused and bolted to flower early. So those flowers are new. Um, this all winter was cover cropped with radishes, and I cleaned out the radishes. There's also some mustard in here and a leek. I cleaned out all the radishes, most of them, and planted some squash. Um, this is winter squash. These are gonna be uh, two different varieties of Moscata that I wanna cross. One of them is some um, Chinese squash that can be eaten uh, immature as a summer squash, but it is technically a winter squash. And the other one is Zucchino Rampasante, and I want to cross these two. And mainly I just want to cross them so that I have some really vigorous F1 hybrid seed for next year. I'm not trying to make a new variety, I just want some hybrid seed. Well, but you can see how bad the dollar weed is. Um, but yeah, so those two little squash plants are new. So I think three weeks ago this uh, planter box was here. Um, but what's new about it is that there's actually things sprouting now. Um, these sunflowers got stunted by some 30 degree temperatures. I think it was actually more like 28, 29. Uh, shockingly, sunflowers are frost tolerant, but they haven't grown at all since that happened. So I'm not really sure if they're going to grow or if I need to replant sunflowers in here. But you can see there's uh, quite a lot of other flowers coming up. These are nasturtiums, I think. Um, there's some flowers, I don't know what they are. There's some zinnias. So yeah, um, planter box was here a couple weeks ago. I just built this last month. The sprouts are new. I think this uh, yellow brandy wine tomato is new. I don't believe that was here three weeks ago um, when I did the last garden tour. It's in a massive clay pot. It's really hard to move that thing. I did try to move it a little bit today so that it would get some more sun. Pretty excited about the yellow brandy ones. I know sandwich slicer tomatoes are always a gamble. It's a much safer bet to just grow cherries and grapes because they're much more vigorous plants. They yield faster, they're more heat tolerant. But uh, 
who doesn't like a BLT. This is another winter squash. It's uh, also that um, variety from China that I got from Baker Creek. Um, I can't remember the name of it. More importantly, I can't pronounce the name of it. Um, but the fruits start out green and they kind of look like scallop squashes. They look like, uh, you know, patty pans, but it's on a vining plant because it's a moscata. And then I guess they mature into like, you know, some type of orangish pumpkin. Um, so that's in a tiny little pallet bed. Um, there's a couple of new things in the greenhouse, I think. Uh, the most interesting thing is the new rat trap. Um, so I have Dan from Home in the Sticks to thank for this design. Um, I've seen a lot of different types of rat traps. I made a video the other day about rat traps, but I never ended up uploading it because I haven't caught one yet, and I figured it wasn't fair to make a rat trap video until I've caught one. But uh, the whole PVC pipe across the bucket by itself does not seem to work for me because it doesn't really roll. It just makes a bridge for the rat. Um, so I like Dan's design a lot better where he used the uh, cardboard cutout and it balances on a coat hanger. So you can see there's a coat hanger underneath. Actually, it's a, the coat hanger is through the uh, PVC pipe and then there's a cutout that's balancing on there. And so the rat will walk up this plank and once he jumps on here, he'll get to this side and his weight will set it off. Um, I ended up not going with cardboard because I get so much rain and the humidity is so high that I was worried it would uh, kind of fall apart on me. You know, even in the shed, all the rat poison I've tried to use, I use like an organic salt-based rat poison, um, it instantly just like turns to mush even if it doesn't get rained on because the humidity is always 90% or more. So uh, I ended up going with a thin piece of plywood, um, quite a few cuts to get that perfect. It's got a, a weight on the far end, and it just kind of balances there. Um, I left it outside one night, and I think the wind set it off, because the next morning the piece of wood was in the bucket, um, and there was no rat. So I moved it into the greenhouse so that the wind won't set it off. But yeah, that's definitely new, and I'm pretty excited about that. Um, these yellow brandywine tomatoes weren't anything worth looking at last time I made a video, but now they're up. I don't know how I feel about the eggshell containers. Yeah, they're free, whereas these trays cost money. But um, it seems like things grow a lot slower in the eggshell containers, and I can't really figure out why, but um, <clears throat> I'm probably not gonna do that again. But yeah, there's uh, quite a few yellow brandy wines um, in here. I've already given away a bunch of them too. Um, these were old tomato seeds from like eight years ago, and it was just random packs from China that like weren't even labeled with varieties, so I have no idea what these will be. Um, I'm shocked any of those germinated, but I did put like probably four seeds in each well. Um, so those are all a complete mystery. I want to say these are all yellow brandy wines. I think this whole tray is yellow brandy wines. I think this whole tray is yellow brandy wines. Um, these are actually labeled, so there's one called uh, Mariglobe. Um, mortgage Lifter, um, oh, this is the squash I was telling you all about. This is in the front raised bed where the radishes were all winter, and it's also the one I just showed you in that small little pallet bed in front of the greenhouse. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, but it's a Moscata variety, and, uh, so that should be interesting. Um, the squash I'm most excited about this year is the Sabring. That is a you know professional series F1 hybrid that was unbelievably expensive, but it's tolerant to powdery mildew. It's a golden zucchini type. Um, one of my big projects this summer is I wanna make crosses between the Sabring and uh, some patty pans. And my goal is to uh, eventually have a stable line of patty pans that are powdery mildew resistant. Um, this is a seed pack of tomatoes I got from Lowe's a few weeks ago and it just said rainbow mix. Um, it was one of those things that had 10% cherries and 10% sandwich slicers and reds and yellows and it had some purples in there and it had all the percentages on the back of all the different, you know, things, but it didn't tell you any variety names, so it's just gonna be a mixture of tomatoes. Uh, there's a couple of eggplants in here, some sunflowers that I don't know why I bothered putting in the greenhouse because they do fine direct seeded, but, um, 
I have thousands of sunflower seeds and they're about to go bad, so I figured why not use them up. But yeah, um, so most of this stuff in here I want to say is fairly new. So all of this was here a few weeks ago, but none of the radishes were ready to pick. And the squash, this is the Sabring Golden Zucchini, it had been, you know, sitting in these uh, hills, but they hadn't germinated. Um, I'm kind of shocked that they did because I direct seeded these like three weeks ago and then we had temperatures into the high 20s and I figured the frost was going to kill the seeds. But um, I guess it just kind of slowed them down and now that it's warming up, they are sprouting. But yeah, these seeds under the ground went through a hard freeze. Um, but yeah, the radishes being ready to eat are new. So this was an Easter egg mix that I got from Twilly's and they were a little slow. Um, you know, a lot of radishes are 30 to 35 days. These are in really crappy soils. So maybe that's why they were a little slower, but now they look great. Um, yellows. Um, I guess that's a purplish. Some are like tan colored and actually really sweet and juicy. Um, it looks like there's some white ones over here. I've never really seen white radishes before, but you can definitely see there's a couple white ones in there. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about these. Um, I got a lot of them, and they're doing great, and I come out and have three or four before dinner every single night. This box of potatoes and onions, I think was here a few weeks ago, but it had like glass around it to protect from frost, and I think most of the potatoes were really tiny. You can see they're quite lush now. Um, yeah, so that's fairly new. These onions have been here since, I want to say I transplanted these into the ground in like December or January. I think it was December actually. Um, yeah, I know it was because I had a friend visiting who helped me. So this was like maybe the last week of December, like the 30th or something. Um, these went in the ground as transplants. But what's new is that they're bulbing. Um, the ones that I started from seed are producing bulbs much faster even though the plants are smaller. The ones I started from sets are bigger plants and have no indication of bulbing yet. So I'm going to do them exclusively from seed in the future. I'm not buying any more sets. I think that's a terrible idea. Um, but yeah, onion patch was here, but the bulbs are new. You can see it goes all the way up through here. All kinds of onions. I think in total I have about 400 onions this year. So that's fairly exciting. Um, things that are completely new. This tomato plant just went in the ground like two days ago. I want to say this is one of the blueberry varieties from like wild boar farms. Um, it looks pretty healthy. It's in really crappy clay soil. I was pretty disappointed to find out uh, just how bad the soil quality is because I've been working hard to, you know, build it, but it's basically just like four to six inches of really nice compost that I've created, but it's still sitting on top of like a foot of straight clay. Um, so when I went to dig a hole for this tomato plant, once I got eight to ten inches down under all that beautiful compost was just straight clay. So I'm not really sure if this tomato plant's going to do well or not. Uh, last year there was squash in here, and the squash seemed to do just fine, but it has a lot uh, more vigorous of a root system than tomatoes. So yeah, that's new. Um, purple tomatillos are new. So these just went in yesterday. Um, let's see, there's one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine purple tomatillos. And those tend to be pretty hardy plants. Um, they tolerate heat, they tolerate drought, they tolerate crappy soils. So I'm really excited for the purple tomatillos. Um, I kind of stopped growing the green ones just because they're really cheap at the store. And you also gotta be somewhat careful if you end up, you know, having wild ground cherry type weeds popping up in your garden. It makes it confusing which ones are the weeds and which ones are the cultivated tomatillos. And so getting a variety that produces purple fruits, I'm always confident when I come out to harvest that I am harvesting what I planted and not some random weed. But um, yeah, those look really good. Um, I was gonna make a Megalo Daikon video this year and show the gigantic, you know, daikons I grow. I was hoping to get one the size of like a two liter soda bottle. I've actually watched this one kind of shrink in the last couple weeks. It was bigger than this, but now the plant's in 
full flower and trying to produce seed pods, and so it is now taking energy out of the storage route to put into seed production. I think this one probably is a little bigger than the one last year, and who knows how much is actually under the soil line. Um, sometimes only like 20 to 30 percent of the radish is above the soil line, and the rest of it is below. So, you know, this could have a, a tail on it that's, you know, another foot and a half, possibly. I'm not going to pull this up. Um, I'm probably just going to let it go to seed and collect some of the seed. It seems silly when I could just buy more cover crop seed. It's pretty cheap to buy daikon seed. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know where the seed I buy is farmed. And I guess it would be cool to have some daikon seed that's maybe a little more locally adapted since it went through an entire growing season here. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should pull the thing up, but it's probably beyond eating quality at this point. It's just going to be really tough, and it would have to be fermented if I wanted to eat it. Um, I don't really have time to ferment anything right now, so <clears throat> I'm just going to let that produce seed. Uh, this Morris heading collard plant is new. This tomato just went in yesterday. You can see it's still wilting. Um, there's like four entire eggs at the bottom of this bucket not even like eggshells like actual whole eggs and probably a year's worth of coffee grounds in this bucket so there's actually not that much potting soil the bottom like four inches is eggs and coffee grounds and then there's potting soil on top so we'll see how that works out uh, this is a cherry type i think this potato box is one i just built a couple days ago I'm really into the potato boxes this is the fourth one i built this year uh, with the door and the hinges so that when you go to harvest you can just open the door you don't have to dig up the plant i'm thinking that that might be cool because then i don't have to harvest all the potatoes at once you know if you just have them in a regular raised bed you got to pull them all up and then you're stuck with a ton of potatoes at once with the door i can open it and harvest a couple every day perhaps um, the lettuce is not new but it's been growing so slow um, I don't know why I bother to grow lettuce, honestly. It seems like a huge waste of time and space, but it is very expensive at the store, and every once in a while I want to have like a burger. Um, this is buttercup lettuce. There's some red oak leaf back there. Um, maybe it's not growing very fast because it's getting dominated by this mustard patch. This is all volunteer mustard greens. Um, they've since gone to flower. But yeah, the lettuce is finally at the point where I can come out and pick some of it. I'm not sure if it heads or not. I'll have to Google that. I don't know if buttercup makes a head or if it's just a leaf lettuce, but um, it's been kind of sad to look at and very slow growing the last couple weeks. And now it's finally starting to look like lettuce. Um, this is a huge comfrey patch, which has obviously been here a very long time. What's new is that there's broccoli plants in here. I've replanted broccoli in here probably five times and the rat or rats keep getting it. Um, but you can see there's a handful left. I put a ton of like straight nitrogen fertilizer on them recently, hoping that might deter the rats. Um, like it was like straight nitrogen, like the Chilean sodium nitrate. I, I'm pretty sure they don't like that. Um, but yeah, so there's a handful of broccoli plants in here. I don't know if they'll be able to really do much since they're kind of getting destroyed by the comfrey, but um, one thing I do is I just come out and rip the comfrey leaves off and then kind of let those drop as fertilizer slash mulch that is kind of the one cool thing about comfrey even though it can be very weedy and take over your beds um, you can pull the leaves off of it and then just leave them at the base of your plants and apparently they're really good fertilizer because comfrey pulls a lot of nutrients out of the ground and so the comfrey with its vigorous root system is pulling nutrients from deep underground where the broccoli roots can't get to but then by dropping those leaves I make them accessible to broccoli plants. Broccoli plants do look pretty healthy now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a daily affair. The comfrey grows so fast, I gotta keep coming out here ripping leaves off. Uh, these two tomato plants are brand new. They just went in two days ago. I think they're both cherries, but again, they're in mostly clay. Yes, the top four to six inches is absolute gold from all my composting and cover cropping and chop and dropping and no-till and all that, but uh, they got four to six inches of great soil and they're sitting on clay this is just the other side of the onion view um other new things other new things the blackberries uh, were not flowering three weeks ago when i made a video now you can see they have flowers on them so these will all be berries pretty soon um, look at all these flowers every one of these will be a berry i didn't really want these here they accidentally 
um, came in on some pine logs that I, this was a raised bed, believe it or not, like two years ago. This was a raised bed and I had cucumbers in it and it was a nice raised bed and I used pine logs as the border of the raised bed and there were blackberry, wild blackberry seeds stuck in the sap of the pine logs and a few blackberry shoots popped out and I didn't think much about it and they got away from me over the summer and now they're invading everything. They're all in this raised bed. They're even in the greenhouse. So these blackberry roots have spread all the way from here, all the way over here. And they, I saw blackberry plants popping up in the greenhouse the other day. And they are from this little patch here. I took a weed whacker to this in the fall and weed whacked it all the way to the ground. And in three months, it's grown back like this. But somebody told me the more you chop them down, the more production you get out of them. So I'm going to keep taking a weed whacker to them every couple months and maybe I'll get a nice berry harvest. But I mean, this looks like it's going to be fairly epic, to be honest. Even though this is a plant I don't want here, it's going to produce a lot of food. This is another yellow brandywine tomato. This was not here a couple weeks ago. Um, I was using this wheelbarrow productively a few weeks ago and I meant to move all this soil to a different spot of the garden. And I don't know what happened, but the whole tire just like collapsed it's not just a flat tire it's all bent up and so i need to uh put a new tire on this and in the two to three weeks that it's been sitting here all this uh, cover crop ryegrass seed sprouted and mustard greens sprouted and there's clover sprouting all that seed was just in the soil that i dug up and put in the wheelbarrow and so i figured i'll stick a tomato in here it has no drainage though, so I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not. These flowers were not here a couple weeks ago. I don't know what kinds these are. It was just a random box of mixed flowers from the dollar store. Um, these are old crappy buckets that are falling apart. The plastic's all chipping, so there's no way I could move these. If I tried to move them, the plastic would just like disintegrate in my hand. So I figured rather than try to pick them up and put them in the trash can and risk getting shards of plastic everywhere. I just threw flower seed on top of them. You can see here's more of the blackberries spreading everywhere. Um, this was carrots last year. I forgot to harvest them. Then they went to flower and seed and I pulled the flower heads off. But there's like giant woody carrots under here that are way past eating stage. Um, so I threw some flower seed on top. Same story. This was like a collard plant. It was like two years old. It eventually finally died from not getting any water ever, except rain, and then I threw flower seed on top. A couple more new things and we'll be done. I promise to keep this video short. Um, these four tomatoes are new, so these were also out of that uh, random rainbow mix tray from Lowe's that just said rainbow mix. I don't know what these are. Um, they could be anything but um yeah so these are in buckets full of eggs and coffee grounds with a little bit of potting mix on top like the other one i was showing y'all i'm not sure if you know putting multiple eggs and tons of coffee grounds at the bottom of a bucket is good it sounds pretty gross to be honest i wouldn't want my feet sitting in a mixture of eggs and coffee but uh, maybe the tomatoes will like it this yellow brandywine plant was just stuck here a couple days ago um, I basically just have like 200 yellow brandy wines. I don't know what to do with them all, so I just keep sticking them in random places. Um, this is the red onion bed. There's also quite a lot of radishes in here. Um, I don't think I'm going to harvest these though. I can't remember if this clay pot tower was here three weeks ago or not. I get tons of questions about these clay pot towers, so I just keep building more of them. Um, I don't think the corn was here three weeks ago. Again, same story as uh, the squash I was telling you all about. I planted this seed a couple weeks ago and it never sprouted because we had temperatures like literally in the 20s. And I was for sure certain that I was gonna have to replant corn because I figured the seeds rotted with the extremely cold, wet temperatures. But um, yeah, that was the thing. It was like 20s and raining. I'm surprised we didn't get snow. But yeah, so uh, the corn actually sprouted which is shocking, but um, I'm pretty sure that like the second I pull this off of here, rats will get up and eat it, so I'm not uh, counting on this corn yet. 
I don't think this clay pot tower was here three weeks ago. It certainly didn't have anything sprouting in it if it was. Uh, this yellow brandy wine tomato is also new. I'm not sure if uh, yellow brandy wine is going to produce anything in a seven gallon fabric pot. It might only be a five gallon. This is either a five or seven gallon. Um, I don't know if that's enough soil volume to really get sandwich slicer tomatoes or not. That's a gamble. But yeah, so there's all kinds of zinnias coming up in this clay pot tower now. All three of them have zinnias in them. This is my smallest clay pot tower, very stable. The other two seem like they're gonna fall over every time we get a high wind. Um, this tomato is brand new. This just went in yesterday. Um, it's in a terrible location. It's got a lot of shade on it, but I'm hoping that it kind of goes this way toward the sun in the morning and climbs this fence. I really just put this here kind of for show so that there'll be lots of pretty golden colored tomatoes along the fence where everybody sees it. Um, yeah, I think that's all the new stuff over here. Um, one last new thing. Uh, I'm sure I have the squirrels to thank for this. I have never, ever, ever planted potatoes over here. Never, ever. So this isn't like a volunteer plant from a previous year's crop. This bed is in deep shade. It's got a shed on one side and the house on the other. It hardly ever gets any sun ever. So this has always just been pole beans or peas. I think this raised bed's been here maybe four or five years and it's literally been continuously pole beans and peas the whole time because both of those things are fairly shade tolerant and they're also climbed to get the sun. And this winter, I was like, you know, I've done peas and beans in here for so long, I don't need to do peas again. I need to rotate to something else. So for the first time ever, I didn't plant peas. I decided to plant onions. And the onions are not doing very well, probably because this gets shade constantly. But a potato plant has popped up in here. Um, the only thing I can think of is that squirrels moved potatoes around from a crop somewhere else and buried one here. I don't know if they think the small potatoes are acorns. You know, I grow a lot of like Yukon Golds and a tiny little Yukon Gold potato might look like an acorn to a squirrel. Maybe they dig them up and bury them for, you know, later use, not realizing it's not an acorn, and then they sprout. So, looks like there's another one behind it. So yeah, two little potato plants in here and I don't have the heart to kill them so I guess we'll just see what happens but that's definitely new I think I just noticed that maybe three or four days ago this is my rat maze of death I think this was here three weeks ago I just didn't show it to y'all um, this is a bucket like with straight eggshells in it it's like halfway full of just eggshells and I'd put a few rat traps in there because I figured they were gonna try to get the eggs they've actually never gone for them but um this is the only area of the garden that I can keep the dogs out of, so I figured it was safe to put rat poison and uh, sticky traps in here, and snap traps, because the only thing that can get in here is rats. The dogs can't get through all these barriers. There's like two fences and wire fence. This is gonna be a trellis for uh, cucumbers or pumpkin later this year, but right now it's just a fence to keep the dogs out of here. It's got the salt poison in here, which I was telling y'all gets instantly wet and mushy um, just from the ground being wet and the humidity um, this has not been very effective I've caught one rat in here I don't know whether a trap got him or the salt poison got him um, I found the dead rat over in the back not near the rest of this stuff but one of these traps was set off one of the snap traps I don't know if he got into the snap trap but it didn't quite kill him and then he died later over here or if he got into the salt poison and then slowly died over here. I don't know what the deal was, but I did finally catch one rat. Um, but I don't think this is very effective, which is why I'm so excited about the new bucket design that I saw on Dan Home in the Sticks' channel. So hopefully that'll work tonight and I'll have a rat in the bucket tomorrow morning and no more uh, broccoli plants eaten. I think I've had 12 or 13 broccoli plants that have been eaten by rats at this point. And I've also lost a couple Swiss chard plants. They've dug up some sunchokes. So incredibly destructive pests right now. Um, so yeah. You can see where a rat nibbled on this Swiss chard plant. I'm actually gonna show y'all some of the plants that were destroyed by rats so that some social justice warrior hippie doesn't comment on my channel and accuse me of being a monster because I put out rat traps. Yes, that has happened in the past. And it's always people who don't really garden or don't have to feed themselves. 
if it is somebody who gardens, you know, they have a handful of plants and they're not really dependent on it as food security. Um, I don't do this as some fun hobby. I do this because I'm trying to provide for myself. Um, so yeah, if there's rats eating my broccoli plants, they have to go. Uh, they also spread diseases. There's a lot of pests I will tolerate. You know, I'll let the birds come in here and eat some of my crops. I'll, you know, share my produce with rabbits, but I'm not about to have some disease spreading rat come in here and, you know, eat everything I plant and potentially cause health hazards. Um, there's like nasty diseases that are transmitted through rat saliva, so you really don't want rats gnawing on your produce, especially if it's salad greens. Um, so yeah, you can see this plant was decapitated by a rat a couple weeks ago. It's slowly growing back. These were completely eaten. Um, these two charred plants have not been touched, which is cool. Um, this is one of the yellow chards. This is one of the, I think, Vulcans. Um, what else have they eaten? Um, there was a broccoli plant in here that got eaten. I think these two broccoli plants were just eaten last night. From low battery. Um, this was like a giant head of broccoli. This was a fall bro broccoli plant, not a spring plant. Like these were all little spring seedlings that got eaten. This was a plant I had uh, put in the ground in the fall. It had a fat broccoli head on it, and a rat came in and ate everything on it. Um, there was a broccoli plant in here, but I don't really see the remains of it anymore. Uh, this was a Swiss chard that was chewed up by rats. This broccoli plant was eaten by rats. This broccoli plant doesn't even have a single leaf left on it because rats got into it. Um, so yeah, they're incredibly destructive. They also spread diseases and they do not need to be tolerated in any fashion. So that's why we're so excited about the new bucket trap. I sort of had fun building it too, just from like an engineering standpoint. But yeah, that's gonna be really cool. Um, they seem to like sunflower seeds. They like everything, but um, when I was planting sunflowers in here not too long ago, they dug up quite a few of them. They don't like everything, that's not true. Luckily, they don't like tomatoes. I've never had a problem with a rat trying to eat a tomato plant. Um, they've gotten into peppers a couple times, which really surprises me, but it seems like once they start chewing on a pepper, they stop. Um, there's another plant that was destroyed by um, rats. You can see that it doesn't have any leaves left on it. They've also started gnawing on the citrus back here. So, uh... Yeah, I'm really excited about this. Thanks, Dan.